Okay, now we are being video recorded as well as audio recorded. Laura, call the roll, please. Okay, Councillor Moulton. Here. Councillor Labarge. Here. Councillor Dubs. Here. And Councillor Rothenberg. Abstain. I'm just kidding. I'm here. <laughs> we do see you. We know you are here. Okay, thank you, Laura. Uh, let's see, is there anybody from the public here who wishes to offer comment this evening? I don't see anybody else, so I will go ahead to our last meeting's minutes, August 5th. Uh, does anyone have any additions, deletions, changes? Is there a motion to accept those minutes? Move to approve. I'll second that motion. Okay. Uh, moved by Councillor Barge, seconded by Councillor Dubs to approve the minutes of August 5th. Any, any discussion? Okay. Laura, call the roll, please. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dubs. Yes. And Councillor Rothenberg. You're, you're muted, uh, Councillor Rothenberg. Did I need to make a call? Is she, is she a co host, uh, Laura? No, I didn't think I needed to do that for committee meetings, but I will make her one right now. There we go. There. Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the minutes are unanimously approved. Okay, on to items that have been referred to the committee. First up is the appointment of uh, Benjamin Weil as director of, of uh, the Climate Action and Project Administration, otherwise known as CAPA. And uh, before I ask uh, the mayor to introduced uh, Director Weil, I will remind listeners that uh, the Department of Climate Action and Project Administration, which is a relatively new department in the city, is responsible for setting strategic goals for climate response uh, to procure for and manage projects with a focus on energy and sustainability. Uh, the department is working to achieve goals laid out in the city's 2021 Sustainable Northampton Comprehensive Plan uh, resilience and regeneration plan to meet the city's target of 2030 for carbon neutrality uh, for municipal operations and a 2050 target for net zero carbon emissions citywide. And uh, CAPA uh, uh, drew two, two of its positions uh, previously existed in other departments, the chief procurement officer and the energy and sustainability officer and the, new, and the created a new position of director, which is what we're discussing today. So, Mayor, would you like to uh, uh, introduce your appointment of uh, Benjamin Weil as the permanent director? Gladly. Good evening, everyone. It's good to be with you. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to be here for the appointment of Ben Weil for, from interim to the permanent director position of Climate Action and Project Administration. Um, you all have had the opportunity to hear from Director Weil quite a bit in the last few months. Um, and the expertise, or I hope that it's very clear that the expertise and knowledge he brings um, to the position, um, and also his really deep understanding of Northampton and our buildings and our systems from his years on NESC um, as a resident and his willingness in that position and, and just as a resident of Northampton to kind of roll up his sleeves and provide his skills um, as a community member. Uh, so it, that's really meant that his work has, um, he has started this work as CAPA interim director um, with a very sort of solid foundation and understanding of Northampton and our systems. Um, he's already come to the council to talk about many of the projects he's working on, and he can talk more about that, like it, it, talk more about those if he would like. Um, but I wanted to sort of share something a little bit behind the scenes, which is that um, he's done a really fabulous job in these few months of pulling together the CAPA team. So as um, Chair Moulton was just saying, that includes the Chief Procurement Officer, um, Will Coffey, and the Energy and Sustainability Officer, Gabby Fox. And his Ben's leadership and his collaboration 
with his staff has clearly been very inspiring, I think, to them. And it's, and it's been great to see Kappa kind of gel together and take off in a way, um, in the way that I envisioned it when bringing those two positions from those other departments together with a director like Ben um, at the head of it. So, um, and, and also, you know, I always wanna take an opportunity to thank the very dedicated residents um, in Northampton Climate Emergency Coalition, um, which worked with me in imagining this department and kind of thinking of, of what we needed in Northampton and um, were really instrumental in, in uh, making this happen. Um, so I want to thank them for that. So um, I'm extremely confident in Dr. Ryle's ability to lead Kappa, um, as I've worked very closely with him since May. And I am honored to elevate him to this position of director. And I thank this committee for your consideration of his appointment. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, uh, director Weil, would you like to um, say anything to the committee to uh, expand on what the mayor said? Um, I, I don't have any prepared remarks. Um, I, I appreciate the mayor's uh, representation. I, um, you know, she's she's very very kind and and has been a, a very helpful uh, leader as you know as I kind of work with with the team and try to find how Kappa is going to interact with all the various departments uh, in the city, um, which I think is a little bit unusual in that way. I mean, there's there's IT and a few others that kind of reach across all these departments. Um, and so I'm already building those relationships and I think they, they are beginning to bear fruit. Um, but I'm also happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, but yeah, I don't have any prepared, uh, statement. Okay. Thank you. Uh, counselors, questions for director Weil. I got my hand up. It's not working. I, I, well, I uh, raise it. your, raise your physical. Oh, okay. I see your, I, I see your virtual hand. Yeah. Council LaBarge. Yes. yes. Um, Dr. Will, I, I want to thank you for your experience, just going over your application and also hearing the mayor of the reasons why she has appointed you was very, very valuable. What made you decide to come back to Northampton, Doctor? Well, I mean, I, I I've lived here all along, and and uh, I, I had been working at UMass for uh, almost fifteen years, um, and part of my job at UMass was as extension professor. So I was doing outreach to and uh, consulting services to a variety of communities all over the Commonwealth, um, and I'd had the experience of giving people good projects to try to execute, but not being able to have the resources or the time to concentrate on bringing them across the finish line. And uh, I thought in my own city, you know, where I, <laughs> where I live in a place that I like that uh, maybe if, if I had a chance to really focus, I could do that. So that's, that's kind of the, the motivation. Um, and honestly, it was just time for a career change. <laughs> Okay, I know on your on the appointment and the reasons why the mayor had made a decision of appointing you as a director. I wanted to ask you, can you please explain to me okay. how you were able to identify the stranded neck meeting credits? How did you do that? The metering credits? How, how do you do something like that? It's actually pretty pretty easy. You just have to take the time to do it. So the city has, I'm going to get the number wrong, but I so don't don't quote me on the number, but I think something like 300 and some separate electric accounts. Some of those are individual light poles, <laughs> and some of them are entire schools. And then we have some where you've got a major account with a school. Let's say uh, Smith Vogue, for example, has four electric accounts, only one of them is its major account. And then it's got these two like sports field poles that have their own <laughs> electric accounts. <laughs> so, and this multiplies across all the different uh, things in the city. And something that was set up, uh, I, I think by Chris Mason uh, year, uh, years ago, o over time, um, I, I can go into the details of it, but basically we pay a certain number of cents on the dollar for 
net metering credits that come from a solar photovoltaic fields, whether it's the one on the old landfill or one out in Spencer Meadows. And you have to appropriate those as a percentage. And what had happened either over time or um, just kind of a, a, an imbalance, some accounts were getting a larger credit than they could ever work off. They just, they weren't able to keep up. And so that happens over a period of years and you start to have these credits that are stuck on this bill <laughs> that you you can't get off. And um, it, there is available a one-time transfer. So we have this one shot to do it. <laughs> and we have to do it before the DPU decides that we're no longer allowed to do it. Um, so basically all I did was I sorted the bills and I looked for the most negative numbers. And then I looked for the ones that had large usages because obviously in the summer, when you've got lots of PV production, you're gonna to start to build all these credits. So negative dollar amounts on your bill. And then I sorted them into the small users who still had big negative credits. And those were the ones that, so it was just a matter of kind of like sorting through data. I thank you for that answer. One more, can you please explain what large projects you are working on? I think people would like to hear that. Okay. Uh, you know, I'll start from, you know, they feel large, but I, I, I maybe I'll start from medium <laughs> to that, <laughs> that go to large. So the one that's coming right up is Leeds Elementary School. And you guys already know about uh, the, the attempt to get it off, uh, uh, get part of the school off of steam. I'm hoping by the end of next summer to get the the 1950s portion of the school entirely heated and cooled with electricity using high efficiency heat pumps. That's a relatively big project, but actually doable. So uh, I'm applying for grants and so forth to, to get it done. Um, but we're coordinating with a lot of different uh, people to try to synchronize things and, and find efficiencies. Um, so that's one that's coming and, you know, fingers crossed, we, we basically get uh, DOER to pay for it. Um, and once you start that, I'm, hopefully we can get an update for you on how much money we will gain by doing what you're planning on doing. I think that would be great for an update someday. Yeah, I, I would. So I, I, I have calculated it because I, I need it for the, the for the grant application, but I don't have that pulled up right now. Um, but it's it's fairly large. Part of the reason is because that school has already done a, it's it's kind of gotten itself ready. There are new windows, like amazing windows that enable the heat pumps. There the we did insulation in the previous two summers, and so that section of the school is ready to go. So that's that's one of the projects, and we're looking at something like again it's it, it's pretty hard but but i'm going to say like 11 to 13,000 dollars a year in savings for that portion of the school alone that's not counting the savings on the right. other portion right. of the school that's amazing um so so that's one project another project that's coming which again i i it maybe i hope next week i will actually have better numbers on this so i'm i'm trying to find a to work with a company that will finance for us and develop essentially a turnkey ground source heat pump system so the high school is actually capable of operating on a ground source heat pump with its own existing uh he heating and cooling infrastructure um and so I'm going to try and get that one financed in such a way that we basically pay for the equipment on our operating budget instead of uh, paying the utility company, but but over a period of 15 years. Again, this is very preliminary because I don't have the proposal from them yet, but that's, that's what I'm working on for there because these are big projects. Um, uh, City Hall. Uh, on next, not uh, not uh, not tomorrow, but the following uh, city council, I am going to be coming to you guys to ask for a reappropriation of money uh, that uh, is currently specified for the stucco and some wood repair on City Hall, and we have an opportunity to put that into the roof instead, 
connect that with solar and then get the Infl Inflation Reduction Act credits, which we then, so once we start getting some money in from the Inflation Reduction Act, we can then cycle that through to other projects. Um, this winter, City Hall will have its asbestos removed, its insulation and air sealing done, uh, heat recovery, fresh air uh, provided to at least the upstairs of City Hall. Um, and uh, uh, if we get a grant that we have applied for, we will also be able to uh, deal with water issues and um, insulation and air sealing for Academy of Music and kind of we're putting some of those parts of those projects together for contracting purposes. Um, I, I, I want to thank you. I really, I want to thank you. I want to thank the mayor for working. You worked with her for many, many months throughout the summer. I think you are an excellent candidate. And just hearing what you're presenting, I think a lot of people will agree with me that I'm happy you're here working for our city of Northampton. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, other councillors with questions, observations? Okay, I wanted to ask you, um, Director Weil, about uh, what I consider to be a very daunting uh, job description uh, for your position. Uh, and as I see it, uh, I, I mean, there, there are many, many components, but I break them down into three main areas. One, of course, is working interdepartmentally on municipal projects, as you've, as you've talked about, and we've seen the results, the lead school, uh, the boiler replacement, we've seen the results with the net metering uh, and uh, with EV uh, uh, charging, the electricity that we're going to start uh, getting revenue from due to your efforts. But that's a huge, uh, that's a huge chunk of your job. But it also has components, as I see it, uh, in terms of community engagement, education, residents, businesses, institutions, also very important. And among the among the, uh, uh, the bullet points in your job description is developing, for example, uh, an energy coaching program. Uh, and then finally, uh, is keeping aware of, of uh, grants and credits and so forth to help help pay for all of this. So I guess I'm asking if you if you see it in that way and how you feel about do you feel that the staffing is adequate to um, to to uh, uh, carry carry out all of these tasks in a, in a way that's going to uh, not, you know, over overburden the three of you. It's funny, we, we the three of us were discussing that yesterday because Another thing we are going to probably bring to you uh, at some point is the idea of taking the municipal fleet of cars and you know vehicles that currently could work better if they were shared better and developing a motor pool concept instead of each department having, having all of their own. And I, I don't want to jump ahead because we're still right. trying to work that out. And some of that has to do with working out with each of the departments. But we realized that if we take this on, all of a sudden, well, who's going to own the motor pool? Well, it's probably going to be us. <laughs> and we're going to have to figure out how do we do maintenance? How do we, you know, so, so uh, we are working on how to solve that problem because we also don't think it justifies like an, an actual employee. Um, for community outreach and uh, energy coaching, um, we are actually applying for a grant that will cover for three years a part-time uh, energy coach position. Um, and then, you know, again, we, we'll see how well that that works. You know, we're we're going to try to build off of um, something that's funded from Mass CEC, that's the Northampton East Hampton heat pump uh, program that was actually funded by a settlement with Eversource. Um, so we're kind of looking in those places to try to give us more resources, uh, you, you know, human resources. Um, the mayor mentioned uh, the Northampton Climate Emergency Coalition, um, and volunteers are a huge resource. And quite frankly, they're asking us 
for tasks <laughs> faster than we can provide them. Um, so, you know, so, you know, we need to give them some structure. We need to give them a program to work with. And, uh, you know, <laughs> they're champing at the bit to help out. So that's part of the resource that we need to mo mobilize. Um, let's see, you mentioned, so it was, it was community outreach, uh, integrating with, with other projects. I'm, I, I think you mentioned another one. Uh, well, the, the third is what you have, what you have talked about is seeking grants uh, uh, to, uh, to help pay for both the, um, you know, the, the, the infrastructure as well as additional staffing, as long as they're grants that are sustainable. Right. Well, and, and so this, for example, the, obviously we're pursuing a grant for a three years of a part-time position. Either at the end of that three years, we're like job well done, uh, you know, money's gone, but also there's nothing left for you to do, or we have to find some other way to fund that person. Um, and uh, we certainly don't want to create a situation where we have one time money and then we uh, create a, 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 an added appropriation that, that we don't, we can't justify. Um, so we have to examine that, but we think at least I, I think that even three years of this position will give us, will help us understand what we're doing and, and either do it better, either justify it because it's, it's doing well or find that there's another way to get things done. Um, again, I think that the, um, the volunteers can do a lot of the outreach um, and that energy coaching is not as complex as we think it is. And, you know, in the end, we just need to connect people with the right resources um, so that they can make good decisions for themselves. Um, but yeah, that is, that is going to be a challenge. Uh, we're certainly pursuing bigger grants. Um, I, uh, again, a lot of this is preliminary as I'm trying to understand it. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm working with Carolyn Mish um, on an EPA grant that could potentially be quite large, um, but uh, you know, again, with not, some of these, you don't know how it's going to turn out until you you've seen how it does. I think my my general approach has been certainly, you know, I'm I'm focused on the municipal operations first because the deadline is sooner, sure. um, and uh, and in all of those cases, I'm looking to either substantially fund with grants or to leverage. Uh, you know, leverage a, a small amount of, of of something to gain, say, uh, Inflation Reduction Act tax credits and bring those back in. Um, you know, that's generally going to be be my approach, at least until I learn better. <laughs> just, yep. Yes, go ahead, Mayor. I was just going to know. You know, that's exactly one of the purposes that we imagine the Climate Stabilization Fund would be used for. Would be able to leverage those funds to then be able to um, get additional, you know, some, sometimes, as you know, you need to be able to show that you have the funds to back something up to then be able to get a grant and then you can backfill that. That's helpful. Uh, I, I, I wanna follow up on your observation that the, uh, that the 2030 uh, goal is, is now a little over five years away. Uh, you remain optimistic that it's, the goal is 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 uh, hittable. Uh, to be honest, um, I would say we. I would like to investigate how we define that goal. <laughs> um, because being being realistic, what we can do, right? Things things that we can do inside of essentially the bounds of a city is we can electrify uh, functions that are currently provided with combustion of fuels. But that still makes us dependent on the electric grid. Um, and even if we find a way, whether it's however we want to talk about it, to take credit for renewable energy, um, providing the, that, the balance of that uh, electricity use, in reality, of course, we're, we're emitting carbon at the rate that the electric grid does. Now, the Northeast grid is getting cleaner and is on a trajectory to get cleaner. Um, so one way to think about it, if we wanted to modify the definition, uh, to make it 
a little bit easier to more plausible uh, would be to define it as emitting no carbon no greater than the electric grid. And that allows us to do a lot of things to um, reduce usage, right, through efficiency. And then, like we're do planning on with the high school and, and Leeds and eventually all the other buildings, electrifying and electrifying at very high efficiency, right, so that our emissions are significantly lower than had you taken that electricity and just put it through a toaster, right? Um, that's still not zero, right? It's it's low and getting lower. And by 2050, if Massachusetts hits its mark, it'll be zero. The challenge with saying, well, in 2030, we will have netted out at carbon neutrality means that we're gonna have to do some, some sort of accounting trick. And the question is, is it valuable to us to do an accounting trick to be able to make a claim you know are, are we are we getting anything out of that um you know are if we buy credits we can do that then they have to be verified there's an expense to them and are we you know are this, the residents of northampton getting value for money when we purchase credits from somewhere else to claim that we've essentially bought indulgences off off of our our carbon sins <laughs> um <laughs> and my this is just my personal opinion is that that's not that's not the best use of our dollars um and i think it makes sense to at least consider arriving at a definition that makes us work really 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 hard to stay below what the grid emits which mainly means avoiding the combustion of fossil fuels locally, um, but doesn't hold us to making up the difference when we can't control the grid really. Um, within limits, right? So we, my my hope is that we're going to get solar sixty two kilowatts of solar PV on the city hall. When we're producing that, that's sending electricity to the grid. That's making some power plant not turn on. And we can take credit for that, um, right? That's that's a real thing that we we would be really doing, and that buys us uh, some reduced carbon emissions, right? Because we're offsetting, um, but it also saves us money on operating costs. So it that's that's my perspective on it, but it's definitely something that's worth additional consideration. These are all uh, very. Uh weighty issues that uh certainly uh I, I feel you know merit um continued conversation and they all uh, you know they all bear on on setting priorities and i think that's that's also an important part of your role other other counselors on the committee have questions counselor uh, rothenberg yes director Weil, could i have an update on the flood pumps um, I have not engaged with that very much. Um, what I would say is, uh, as, as far as I know, um, that's kind of the DPW is running point on that. Um, and yeah, actually, actually, that's 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 what I know. <laughs> um, I think it's about money, but the mayor may have a better so, so Yeah, control is under DPW and we are, you know, we have various grants that we're waiting to hear from, including, con you know, congressionally directed spending. Director Wow, could you speak to sort of where we are situated with floods right now in general? Yeah, um, we have a fairly a large amount of impervious surface. We have um, a different, the, the flood threat is different now than it was uh, two decades ago, say. So the the kinds of floods the sort you know uh we have less of a concern about the river rising which is what we have the original the levees system for and more of a concern about overwhelming our drainage system um with uh inundations large large floods um it is a project that i'm looking at but have not started um 
to try and identify places where we can detain water, thereby buying us time, basically slowing down the movement of water. And since stormwater is really all about time, if you can kind of detain water, then you can release it slower, you can control it, and you reduce the risk of floods. Um, there, there are some places that over the very, very long term are going to flood repeatedly. And, um, you know, that, that is a hard, a hard situation. Cause I think in, it, in some cases, uh, certain properties, uh, become very costly. Um, and, um, yeah, that's, that's, it's, it's not an easy problem. Mm -hmm. Any other questions uh, from any uh, any of the counselors who are here? I, I do have one more question. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Councilor Rosenberg. It's very much to put you on the on the spot because you'll have mm -hmm. to think way back through the course of your life, and I'm wondering if you can think of any memorable instances where you were put in a position of having to stand up for something that you believed in, in a situation with, say, an authority figure? Um, stand up for something that I believed in with an authority figure. Um, and you can go all the way back to elementary school if you need to. <laughs> um, So this is it's it's definitely coming out out of left field. So I'm I'm sorry I don't have a good a good one like. And uh, I use like, it because of course you're a direct report, right, to one person. Oh yeah. And your decisions also impact thirty thousand people. Right. So I wonder sort of how you navigate that, and I don't know if you had to do that in your academic life. Oh, I did. Now there's in academic life, there's certainly a certain amount of, um, you know, you run your own uh, research, you run your own classes. And, you know, one of the nice things about it is you have a certain amount of a certain amount of freedom. Um, to be honest, my my experience with authority figures has not been that I needed to stand up to them so much. Maybe I've just been very, very lucky. Um, but that I've had to figure out what their problem is. And if I, if I felt that, that we were heading down over a cliff, this is, or whatever, you know, doing something un uncomfortable, the trick is to provide them a solution. Um, I think I, yeah, in fact, I think that's how I've generally dealt with things, even, um, even as just as as a resident complaining about something with the city so you know there there were things as as a resident where i disagreed with um let's say the the, the prior uh, director of of planning and some of us wanted something and what i realized was it would be one thing to go and yell at him and you know and just tell him that we this particular group didn't like it generally we found we could get a better hearing if we said well what what's he actually trying to accomplish and could we get what he wants or what he thinks is of high value in a way that deals with our concern. Um, and so, you know, it was mostly about trying to provide them with other options. That's great. So you've got a power of persuasion. And I think that I just want to leave you with a comment from Ward 3. I assume and presume that you will be the director. And so as you go into the work, continue the work, I just want you to be mindful of the position of great power that the whole CAPA program really holds, right? And the opportunity to spend money and resources to do novel things that are well supported by the community. And to please always remember that there are so many of us here that have so many needs and perhaps it's not always going to be the most highest, best use of our resources, even if we're always so excited about it, we have to always be sure 
that we're really thinking of everyone, even if it's outside of our job description to do so. So I just ask you, as you go on these exciting projects that seem very, very encouraged by the administration and by the community, please also remember some of us who may have quieter voices and also need to share these resources. Thank you. Of course, thank you. Okay, Any any anybody else who is here? Otherwise, I will ask for a, uh, a motion on a recommendation. Yes, I would like to make a positive recommendation for Dr. Benjamin Will as the full-time director of the Kappa department to the full city council. I'll second that motion. Okay, motion made by Councilor Labarge, seconded by Councilor Dubs for a positive recommendation to the set, to the uh, full council on uh, the appointment of uh, Dr. Weil as uh, permanent director of uh... We're losing you. Yes, I I'm sorry. I I my uh, my phone is ringing in the background. I was oh. attempting to spare you from hearing that. Oh, okay. uh, is there any further discussion on the motion? I just want to say, uh, 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 Director Weil, that while I describe the job description as daunting, uh, I have every confidence that you bring the experience, background, and package of skills slash knowledge uh, that will make you a, a very effective director. And uh, I think that you're... Uh, your prior experience in the uh, in the academic world, as well as as a consultant in the private in the uh, nonprofit sector, um, you you have uh, uh, you you understand things from many perspectives, and and very importantly, you have an understanding of of Northampton from from living here and having been a part of uh, of NESC. So I uh, I think this is a a brilliant appointment and uh, look forward to um, having you as director. I also want to note for the record, you are probably, I suspect, the only uh, 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 appointment uh, whose appointment memo from the mayor notes that while you were in high school, you were a soccer player for Amherst Regional, arch rival of Northampton, and, and assisted Northampton apparently in winning many of those soccer games that you played against uh, uh, the Blue Devils as, as a hurricane. So thank you for that as well. Uh, okay, Laura, roll call please on a positive recommendation. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dubs. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. And Councillor Moulton. Yes. Okay, that passes unanimously. So that will go to the full council uh, tomorrow night. Uh, and it's already on the agenda. Uh, so thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Director Weil. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate your both being here. Thank you very much. Hi. Okay, next up is... Uh, we have the reappointment to the Agricultural Commission of uh, uh, John Babala. And uh, as a reminder, uh, the Agricultural Commission is uh, a seven member advisory uh, commission that uh, advocates and promotes uh, farming uh, in Northampton. Uh, 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 Mr. Babala has been a, a, a member of the commission. He was actually a founding member of the commission, so he has served on it uh, during its entirety over the, these past uh, 18 years. He is a, uh, a member of a multi-generational uh, farming family in the meadows. Mm -hmm. uh, he has uh, direct knowledge of, of uh, both dairy and vegetable farming. He's also been very active in the Farm Bureau, so his roots in the farming community are, are deep and broad. And uh, uh, one, of the, one of the goals of the Agriculture Commission is to have among its membership a diversity of different kinds of farming and different uh, 
parts of Northampton. So he is uh, a, a very, uh, very much an expert on farming in the meadows, which of course is a, a critical uh, area for agriculture in in the city. So uh, is there a uh, is there a motion on a recommendation for his reappointment? Council Labarge? Yes, I make a positive recommendation for John J. Babola to be reappointed on the Agricultural Commission to full city council. Second. Okay. Second by uh, motion made by Councillor Labarge, seconded by Councillor Rothenberg. Uh, is there any further discussion on a positive recommendation uh, for John Babola? Uh, uh, Laura, roll call, please. Yes. Where's Laura, she... you're you're muted, Laura. Yeah, hear her. I apologize. <laughs> Councillor, okay, Councillor Rothenberg, I heard your yes. <laughs> Councillor Dobbs. Yes. Um, Councillor Moulton. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Okay, that that uh, positive recommendation passes uh, unanimously and will also be on the council agenda tomorrow night. The other uh Reappointment uh, that was referred to us is Sue Lofthouse uh, to the uh, Urban Forestry Commission. This is another advisory commission, um, also seven members uh, that uh, uh, works to, uh, to protect and increase the city's public shade tree canopy. Uh, I know uh, 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 Ms. Lofthouse, she is uh, a neighbor of mine, and uh, she has been a member of the Urban Forestry Commission since 2018. Uh, she's also a very active volunteer for Tree Northampton, uh, planting trees throughout the city. So she has experience both in, in setting policy as well as actively uh, uh, doing, carrying it out. She and I have planted trees together on at least two occasions, I know she is passionate about that. And uh, her uh, professional work is in the uh, uh, nonprofit uh, fundraising sector for New England public media. Is there a uh, motion for uh, a recommendation on the reappointment of Sue Lofthouse? I'll make a motion for a positive recommendation. I'll second that. Uh, motion made by Councillor Dubb, seconded by uh, Councillor Labarge on a positive recommendation for Sue Lofthouse to the Urban Forestry Commission. Uh, Laura, roll call, please. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Dubbs. Yes. Okay, that passes uh, unanimously and also will be on the agenda uh, at tomorrow night's council meeting. Uh, okay, the other uh, uh, the other appointment has that has uh, been referred to us uh, is a new appointment of uh, Aaron Irvin uh, to the Zoning Board of Appeals to fill a vacancy. Uh, so she is uh, someone who we would uh, ask one of the members to interview and then report back to us at our next meeting. Now, um, she happens to live in Ward 3. So, um, Council Rothenberg, if you are available to do that, uh, I will give you the right of first refusal since she is a constituent. I would love to do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, you will find her... Um, contact info in the original uh, appointment memo that was distributed for, uh, to the council on August 15th. Okay, so that brings us to uh, new business. And uh, I would like to propose a second meeting uh, of the uh, City Services Committee in September because we know we are, we are going to get uh, referred to us tomorrow night the uh, appointment of, of uh, John Cartledge as permanent police chief, as well as three other new appointments to boards and commissions. And 
rather than waiting for more than a month to our October meeting, I am suggesting that we meet again on uh, Monday, September 23rd, uh, which is the fourth Monday of, of the month. Um, our, I don't have a problem with that date. Good, Council LaBarge. What about Councilors uh, Dubs and Rothenberg? Are you available to meet at, at 5 p.m. on September 23rd? Yes. Yep, that works for me. Okay. So um, we will set that uh, that time for our next meeting. And that means, uh, Councilor Rothenberg, if you could uh, complete your interview with, uh, with uh, Aaron Urban by then, that would be helpful. And I will, once the other referrals are made to us, most importantly, the police chief's referral, I will check with the mayor and uh, uh, make sure that that time is uh, uh, also one that she, as well as uh, uh, Chief Cartledge, can be with us. Is there any other new business tonight? Okay, I think then a motion to adjourn is in order. Move to adjourn. We'll second that. Okay, motion made by Council LaBarge, seconded by Councilor Dubs. Roll call, please, Laura. Councilor Moulton. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Dubs. Yes. And Councilor Rothenberg. Okay, we are adjourned at 5.48 p.m. Thank you all. And Thank uh, you. we'll, we'll see you. We'll see you again tomorrow evening. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.